Here's your video for rational expressions where we finally start to add and subtract them. Now I hope that you have previously watched the video for finding the LCM because that is a very important part to these problems where we need to add and subtract. And we won't go into too many details about finding LCM in this video. We definitely will do that, but we won't break it down as much as I did in the earlier videos about just finding the LCM. So let's move on to adding and subtracting. These problems can become very lengthy, so we're first going to look at a few problems that don't have as much work to do, but by the end we will understand what all the steps are from start to finish that we might have to do with an adding or a subtracting problem. This problem comes to us in great shape, and I'll tell you why. The denominators are already the same, and if you think back to adding or subtracting fractions, it's much, much easier once the denominators are the same. When we see the same denominator, we know that our answer will also have the same denominator, and we just need to combine our numerators. Since our numerators are polynomials, that means combine like terms. So x squared there's another like term, the 3x squared. Those together will make our 4x squared. No regular x term here. We're also going to try to keep our terms in descending order. So x squared was our highest exponent. Next would be regular x. And the only one we have is right here, this x. So we're bringing down that one positive x. And finally, the constant, a positive 4 with positive 1, will make positive 5. And there's our answer. Here's an example to go through a subtraction problem. We want to spot. Now the denominators still match up. That's a great sign. It means we are ready to combine these two fractions into one. And we have that same common denominator in the denominator of our answer. And we know that we combine like terms. But this is a subtract, so it's not an automatic combine like terms. If you can think back to subtracting polynomials, well, my favorite way is when it comes to a subtract, flip signs and add. So that subtract means flip the t sign of every term that follows the subtract. It has to be in the numerator only, and it changes that subtract into an add. Okay. Now remember about fractions. A negative fraction means that negative can be out front, or with the bottom, or with the top, but not both. So we're basically looking at that subtract and saying, throw it up top, distribute that negative to flip the signs of our terms up here. When we do that move, it becomes an add, and now we can just combine like terms as usual. So I will always do that when it comes to subtraction problems. Flip signs in the numerator after the subtract, and it changes to an add so we can combine like terms. So let's find those like terms. There is an x squared with no other x squared terms, bringing down the x squared. A minus 3x with no other x terms, and then a negative 3 with this negative 7. And for combined like terms, I always add negative 3 plus negative 7, negative 10. Now I want you to think about, back from numerical fractions, what was the unwritten rule about the end of a problem? Your final fraction needed to be simplified in lowest terms. So remember, how do we simplify these rational expressions? It comes down to two main steps, factor, then cancel. So at the end of these problems, we want to think about, can we simplify? We're going to think, can we factor? And then, can we cancel? Now this example, the denominator is already factored. But can we factor the numerator? x squared minus 3x minus 10, we can factor x minus 5 times x plus 2. The denominator, we're bringing it over in factored form. So there's our factor. Now do we have anything we can cancel? Absolutely. x minus 5s can cancel. And that leaves us with our final answer, x plus 2 over x plus 3. Those sets of parentheses have, have gone away, and that's often how we see our answer written. If, our, if after canceling, we're left with just one binomial factor, then we can lose the parentheses. But if you prefer to keep them in parentheses, by all means do that. That's still a correct answer with parentheses. But either way, there is our answer simplified. Now we're going to 
ramp the problem up just a little bit by looking at an example where the denominators do not match already, okay? So what we did to find LCM, that needs to be our first step. We're spotting that we have two fractions that we're trying to add, and if we are trying to add or subtract, we need to have a common denominator. Our steps for finding the co common denominator are first, factor each denominator, the 6x squared factored as 2 times 3 with 2x's, the denominator 4x factored as 2 times 2 times x. We build the LCD looking at all the different factors we see and thinking, where do we see the most? So thinking about twos, uh, this list has two twos, this list has one. So that's where we see the most. That tells us to use two twos. This list has one three, that has none, so we need one three. Our top list has two x's. This ha list has one x, so that's where we see the most two x's. That's how many we need in the LCD. And a quick multiply, two times two times three is 12, and the two x's x squared. There is our LCD. So the problem started off just with find the common denominator. Okay, next, let's make some space. The next move is one that we haven't done together yet. It's where we take these two fractions and rewrite them as new fractions that have that common denominator. And if you think about this part of the problem with numerical fractions, we would do something like, well, what do I need to multiply to top and bottom? What do I need to multiply to the denominator to get me to the common denominator? And whatever we multiply to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So same approach, 6x squared times what will get us to 12x squared. And you might see it's a 2, but our factored lists can be helpful at this part. Remember, our LCD covers each of these lists. So what does this list, what is the 6x squared, what does it currently have that's missing from our LCD? What's missing from this that our LCD has? I guess that makes a little more sense. The 6x squared has a 2 and a 3. The LCD has two twos. So we've got a 2, we've got a 3, we've got both of our x's, but what's missing is the second 2. And that's the same 2 you would have spotted if you thought, oh, well, I know 6 times 2 is 12, and we have our x squared. So just another option for us to determine what do we multiply to top and bottom. We multiply what's missing from our list. Okay, t top and bottom times 2. That will bring our denominator to the LCD, 12x squared. What do we have to do in the numerator? We have to multiply by 2. Be cautious at this point. Our numerator is two terms. How would I multiply two terms by two? It has to be distribute. Very common place to go off path. However many terms we have up here, we would need to multiply everything by two. That two needs to be distribute. Even though we often see a two out in front of parentheses when we need to distribute, it's really any time we multiply two terms by one term, you must distribute. That numerator is 6x plus 4. What about our second fraction? x minus 4 over 4x. You could maybe think, well, what do we need to multiply to 4x to get us up to 12x squared? Or I could compare my lists of factors. The denominator 4x had 2, 2, and an x. Our LCD has the two twos. LCD also has a 3 and another x. That is what's missing. We're missing the 3 and we're missing the second x. That's what we need to multiply, 3x. We need to multiply it to the bottom to get us to 12x squared, and we need to multiply the same thing to the top because multiplying top and bottom, multiplying numerator and denominator by the same thing keeps our fraction equivalent because that's really a fraction equal to 1. And 1 times anything is that same anything. So it must be same multiplier to top and bottom. It will make our denominator the LCM, or the LCD, 12x squared. Numerator, another case of, has to be distribute. Two terms up here, got to distribute. So that's going to be a 3x squared minus 12x.